Eagle Community Television presents Community Connection with your host, Mike Cooper. Hello and welcome again to Community Connection from Eagle Community Television. Thanks for watching. Thanks to our producer, Jeff Durall. We're in the main lobby area of Forsyth Library on the campus of Fort Hayes State University. We'd like to introduce you to the Dean of Forsyth Library, the new Dean as of <laughs> August 3rd, Deborah Ludwig. And Deborah, let's begin, if we might, with uh, your background coming to Forsyth Library. Okay, well, thank you, Mike. This is actually um, the second time I've been with Forsyth Library. I started here in 1988 when computers were first making their entrance into um, universities and into libraries. And, and um, some people will probably remember the first library catalog, TopCat. And so I worked on um, helping the library implement TopCat as, a, as an alternative to the card catalog and as our first um, automated way to check out books and so forth. So that was my first experience here as catalog librarian. Wasn't that on the, when the computers were so large they had to be rolled in on a table probably or stationary? Oh, I don't even know if they would have fit on a table. <laughs> they were, it was all mainframe at that point uh -huh. in time. And uh, you got your uh, degree at KU, uh, graduate uh, uh, with a degree in science and education. I um, graduated from KU and my first job was as a junior high school teacher. I did that for five years and then my husband and I moved to Colorado to a small town and um, he is also an Eng he was an English teacher and so um, I started working in a library and I just got hooked. I have to tell you, Monte Vista Public Library is what started me on my path to librarianship. I was a school librarian for a period of time. I was the public library director in Alamosa, Colorado and also worked at Adams State for a short period of time on a grant and then that was when I came to Fort Hayes right out of uh, my graduate program. And you got your Master of Library Science at Texas Women's University in I Denver. did, I did. Great so school. What led you from teaching to library science? Was it that passion for libraries, Deborah? It, it really was. As I said, I you know, I, I was a young mother and my husband was teaching English and I just I took the job in the public library and it is so rewarding to um, help people connect with the information they need, whether it's a fiction book, just something to read and relax by, or whether it's somebody who has a a medical condition and needs a point or two some resources or somebody who's trying to learn a new technology. All of those are great ways to interact with people and that's what librarians do. So, Matter of fact, uh, uh, Deborah was uh, with us a little bit earlier in one of our uh, previous community connections uh, visiting with Sheldon. Uh, the new addition to the uh, maker space and uh, you and Sheldon are going to become fast friends pretty quickly I think. I think Sheldon and I are going to have a great relationship. I wish I could teach him to reshelve books for example. We'll see but he's he's not very tall so I'm not sure how that would work out for us. <laughs> Maybe in an, a later life perhaps. Talk about, I always like to ask about early influences. Okay. Uh, who influenced your life? Well, I, I will tell you, my parents were um, school teachers originally. My mom and dad both taught in country schools out around Edmond, Kansas, in uh, Graham County and Norton County. Um, I would see pictures in my mother's photo album of all of her eighth grade students. And, you know, she told me a lot of stories about the, the country schools. I went to high school in um, St. Francis, Kansas, and I had some great, great teachers there, including um, Carl Warner, who was a big influence. I think I became a, an English teacher, probably mostly because of Carl Werner. And, and uh, my father went on to become principal and then superintendent in St. Francis. And when my father retired, Carl Warner became the superintendent. So somebody certainly that I have a lot of admiration for. And, and I love teaching junior high school, I have to say. Um, I'm still in touch with uh, one of my former students from junior high school. So. Um, you must have had a ball then, Deborah, while the young people from middle school were here for the Ben Franklin papers, mm -hmm. which the library has presented over the past few years. I did have a ball. It was so much fun. And Cynthia Garrett, Cynthia Garrity, um, our Learning uh, Commons coordinator, did a wonderful exercise with them, working with some technology to talk about facts about Ben Franklin. And there were stations all around the library where they had different learning activities. It was great fun. 
Tell me about uh, the unique features of Forsyth. I know this is kind of unfair since you've only been here to August, but uh, what you, you were here previously. Mm -hmm. So talk about some of the uniqueness of Forsyth Library here on the campus. Well, one of the things that just has impressed me so much about Forsyth Library is the partnerships that we have with different student groups, such as the Center for Civic Leadership, for example. Mm -hmm. We, um, of course, have the Tiger Food Bank. I believe you talked with them earlier. Mm -hmm. um, about their program and so that's a nice partnership and you've now seen the makerspace that's a partnership of course with the science and mathematics education institute but we also have some things like the times talk um, which is part of the american uh, democracy project and what i really like about that is it's a leadership opportunity for our students so they organize it they come see me and tell me about the dates um, they work with their advisor um, for that project and, and um, they do the setup, they make it all happen and so I really like that um, we have projects like that, we'll have Swipe Out, uh, I'm going to get this wrong, Swipe for Hunger, Swipe Out Hunger, uh -huh. Sw I'm sorry, Swipe Out Hunger is the name of it, we'll have that in October where we do packaging of meals to send mm -hmm. overseas, um, we'll have a um, event in it's called it's called Christmas. I'm getting this wrong. It's a it's an event to help children, needy children, in Christmas, where we'll do some gift packaging as well. And again, those are all run by students, and so just fabulous to see them use the library as a as a hub for well, engagement. Again, another perfect example of Fort Hayes and the community mm -hmm. ties which mm -hmm. the university brings and Forsyth is a major part of that. Mm -hmm. And that Times Talk is great because it's a community event. People can come, they can listen for an hour or such and uh, be informed and get some uh, ideas on issues, all student driven then. Absolutely, absolutely. And the other wonderful program that we have, I think, um, that's unique is the um, it's our special collections area. We have a Volga German collection, which um, is a nice complement to what the Hayes Public Library also has. I see ahead of us some real opportunities to work together, um, not only the two libraries, but also with the Ellis County Historical Society, with the library in Ellis, and, and just really to take a countywide approach to um, sharing what we have and sharing what we can do together for the community. I think that's one unique feature of libraries, Deborah, is the fact that you can archive and collect and keep these materials that might be lost otherwise were they not in a central location. And we can, and I think that uh, one of the things people don't always realize is beyond, behind all of that work to care for those materials are some very, very um, hardworking people who have a lot of specialized knowledge in how you preserve materials for the future. Um, what it takes to make those accessible and more and more what it takes to make those accessible through digital means. So in right now you have to come here physically to see many of our materials but we hope in the future that more and more of those materials will be available worldwide. And since you have such a great long time perspective with library work Talk about uh, some of the changes that have occurred in libraries over the years. I mean, some of them are obvious, like uh, all of the computers we see the students using here on the main floor. Uh, but talk about some of the changes, would you? Well, I suspect if, if I sit in a group, um, when I say library, you say, the, an the answer would be mm -hmm. books. And I think that's one of the things where you just, you just hit on the, the influence of technology. That's been a big influence on libraries over the last um, 40 or 50 years, not just in, in recent times, libraries were very early adapters of, as we were talking about earlier, mainframe technologies, you know, to automate basic processes. But now technology has moved into the hands of everyone. And so, um, you know, we have computers here. We don't have enough of them yet. So um, on a Monday night when you come in, this place is packed and, and it's hard to find a, find a computer. Um, that is one of the biggest changes. I think the other change that we're just moving into at Forsyth Library is um, moving more and more of the professional journals um, to electronic format. So right now you see a lot of the journals around the library and in print format, but more and more faculty are teaching virtually. They're teaching online. They want to be able to get to those materials where they are. and so. 
um, in the future you will see more and more of our collections moving online. I believe somebody told me that we have um, now 120,000 um, electronic books for use. So um, that's an amazing number and I believe if you went back to 2011 that was under 15,000. So tremendous growth in terms of electronic resources. The other thing that I think is changing and the makerspace helps to exemplify this is that the reason libraries have had books and have had journals for so many years is because um, we're about learning. That's the point of having those resources, to be able to learn, to be able to research something new. And more and more libraries are involved in partnerships like Makerspace because we're trying to move upstream closer to where learning is happening. Learning is more hands-on and more experiential um, these days. And so, um, you know, a partnership like the Makerspace, and I'm sure there will be other kinds of partnerships in the future like that, um, that really address student learning are a big change for libraries. But you know, I still have people who say there's nothing that beats opening a hardcover book or a printed piece of material to read as opposed to a screen or a Kindle or whatever it may be. I don't think books will ever go away. I don't think books will ever go away either. You don't have to plug them in. They don't run out of battery life. You can take them in your car. You can take them into a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I think you're absolutely right, Mike. Are university libraries different from public libraries? I know they're complementary parts mm -hmm. to each, but uh, mm -hmm. are there differences? I would say, um, as a former public librarian, we addressed um, the information needs from from uh, preschool through um, 80, mm -hmm. you know, everybody uses the library. We're a little bit more focused in academic libraries on a, on a smaller population, a more narrow population, not smaller in terms of numbers, but focused on what students need in student learning. And, and so um, that is a difference. But I think we both have in common wanting to be hubs for our communities, wanting people to be comfortable coming in and engaging in the library. We want the library to be their place. And so um, in that way, we have a lot, of, a lot of commonality. Expand on that in our final minute, if you would, Deborah. that libraries seem to be a part of the fabric of the community, that every community from the early days of Andrew Carnegie days, they're, they're a central part of the community. You know, it's really interesting because people have predicted the end of libraries and quite the opposite is happening. We just looked at our own instruction statistics, for example, and we've had more students in the last few years engaged in coming into the library and um, taking part in some of the instruction than we offer than in the past. So I, I think the um, rumors of our death were premature. <laughs> well, we're certainly happy for such a beautiful facility, such an engaging facility as Forsyth Library and to meet the new dean of Forsyth Library, Deborah Ludwig. She's our community connection. Thanks for watching. <laughs>